The 2023 NFL schedule is finally out, and I've never felt more confident that the Carolina Panthers are going 17-0. I'll tell you why right here on Locked On Panthers. You are Locked On Panthers, your daily Carolina Panthers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into another edition of the Locked On Panthers podcast, a part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, as always, Julian Council, talking Carolina Panthers with you every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, your team every day. That's our motto here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. And be sure to follow me, Julian Council, on Twitter. At Julian Council, where on Fridays I answer your weekly Friday mailbag questions either at me or DM me and participate in next week's edition of the weekly Friday mailbag right here on Locked on Panthers. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of the NFL. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked on today to get started. Finally, at long last, the NFL has released the schedule dates. We've known the schedule since week 18 of the 2022 NFL season. Now we know when those games will be played. And I am very happy that I can go into my calendar, see that I have three Sundays off, and start planning what I'm going to do on those weekends where the Carolina Panthers are not playing football. That's why I really want to know when the dates are as soon as possible. I'm also interested because, well, you know, I'm a Panthers fan and I do this daily podcast. So it'd be nice to know how the schedule lays out for the Carolina Panthers. I feel like the best way for me to do this is to go game by game. No, I'm not going to give my prediction on what's going to happen game by game. Although the Panthers are going 17 and 0, of course, uh, but I'm not going to give my prediction. I'm just going to kind of do what I did a little bit yesterday. Talk about storylines, kind of evaluate when those games are being played. So we'll go through the first seven weeks, uh, then the uh, next seven weeks. And then I think the next six weeks. No, what is that? I'm trying to do the math, whatever, you know, I'm, we're going to do it for six weeks, then the next six, then the next five, because six plus six is 12 plus five is 17. But aren't they 18 weeks? You know what I'm trying to do. You understand what I'm trying to do. Let's just go through the schedule. All right, starting off week one, the Carolina Panthers will play on the road within division against the Atlanta Falcons. It's actually fitting because the first Carolina Panthers game ever was in Atlanta. My my, pan, my uh, parents were actually there um, at that game at the Georgia Dome back in 1995 where Frank Reich was the starting quarterback and Dom Capers was the head coach. Well, coming up here in September, Frank Reich will be the head coach. Dom Capers will be on his staff. And Bryce Young, fingers crossed, I think, will be the starting quarterback. I know I talked about Houston will make a lot of sense. Top two picks, their relationship, two teams where the Texans are going to be no good. No one's going to be interested in watching the Texans later on in the season. Make that week one game as you're probably going to have Bryce Young and C.J. Stroud start. But instead, they go with Atlanta in a divisional game. I can't remember the last time the Panthers played an opening game against a division opponent. I don't necessarily uh, love it that much, but in a way, I kind of do. Everyone hates the Falcons. You hate the Falcons. I don't like the Falcons. I don't really hate the Falcons. I just don't really care about them. The Falcon fans are really what annoy me. The Falcon players, whatever, because, um, you know, it's the Falcons. So it's a game that's going to get people really fired up week one. And it's got a pretty good historical background, as I just mentioned there. So excited to see the Panthers head down I-85 South to face off against the Atlanta Falcons. Desmond Ritter, too, going to get the start versus Bryce Young, I think. It will be interesting to see which of those young quarterbacks can be the quarterback in the NFC South moving forward. Week two, the Panthers at home in primetime, Monday night football, staying again within the division against the New Orleans Saints. I actually love this. That Bryce Young's home debut, you know, assuming he's going to be the starting quarterback week one and week two, Bryce Young's home debut is going to be under the lights at Bank of America Stadium before a sellout crowd. The Panthers fans, we're going to have to wait all the way until I believe that's September 19th when that game will be played. And they're going to have to wait all the way until September 19th. I'm scrolling down my calendar right now. No, September 18th. I have to wait all the way to September 18th for that game to be played. And they're going to have to be in prime time 
on Monday Night Football for the first time in a couple of years. We have been relegated to Thursday Night Football duty where there will be a Thursday night game again for the Panthers, but now getting a primetime game with your franchise quarterback at home against the Saints where you potentially are going 2-0 and in a division. Yes, I'm calling a win week one against the Atlanta Falcons. Me already deciding to predict the schedule. I already told you all 17-0 and anyway. So week one, get the win. Week two could go 2-0. and be 2-0 and in a division against Atlanta and New Orleans and have Bryce Young play before a massive crowd, a crowd that's going to be out of their minds. If you're not taking off, if you haven't already taken off Monday or, and Tuesday, what are you even doing? Are you even dedicated to the cause if you have not already taken off those two days to tailgate and then to recover from the party that's going to happen there on Monday night when they play the New Orleans Saints? I can't wait for that. Now, week three at Seattle kind of tough to go out west on a short week the Seahawks of course were a playoff team last year the Panthers went to Seattle won that football game late in the season was the biggest win they had had all season to that point the first road win that they had the first time they had back-to-back wins and we were starting to believe okay Steve Wilkes got these boys ready to go maybe these men really these men ready to go looks like they could actually be a playoff team as we know it did not end up well following that game they showed some metal going out west to play the seattle seahawks i think the seahawks will again be a good football team geno smith getting that contract really happy for him after everything he went through in new york in his career to get to seattle get an opportunity after they traded russell wilson and everyone in the nfl thought that was insane and seattle ended up being in a better situation i'm not saying that geno smith is the answer long term in seattle but what they got pick wise and what russell did last year in denver and what Gino did last season in Seattle to where he's getting another year as a starting quarterback, really good situation out there for Pete Carroll, John Snyder, and the Seahawks organization. And for fans, I said it on Thursday's show or whenever, I think Friday's show, whenever the mailbag show, that perfect time for Panther fans to go out there in Seattle in September where the days are still long. It's going to be absolutely beautiful in the PNW. I wish I could go. I will not be out there, but y'all should definitely get out to Seattle like that, but tough to go there on a short week. Week four at home versus Minnesota. Adam Thielen revenge game. Let's go. Adam Thielen told Joe Person of The Athletic that he's happy about the fresh start, that he's ready to get going, be the guy here in Carolina, and it's his opportunity. And that week four, I would think that we're going to start seeing some growth from Bryce Young. To start off on the road against Atlanta, that's tough, but Falcons fans don't show the games anyways. And in week two under the lights, going to be an electric environment, and he's kind of used to it. He played in Tuscaloosa at Alabama. Going to Seattle, never easy. Good football team, loud crowd, but back home, comfy combines of Bank of America Stadium against the Minnesota Vikings, a team that I think this year, there's going to be a severe regression to the mean after they won a bunch of one score games last year until they didn't in the playoffs against the New York Giants, the team that they had beaten in a, a really good game in a regular season. That was a one score game. The regression, the mean is going to happen. And I think the Panthers can be in good position to win that football game against the Minnesota Vikings as well, but excited to see Adam Thielen playing against his old team week five, staying in the NFC North heading up to Detroit, our favorite lockdown host, y'all's favorite lockdown host. We'll talk to him again against the lions. Ben Johnson was the favorite to be the Panthers head coach, decides that he's going to leverage the Panthers' interest and really David Tepper's thirst into a contract extension and getting a ton of money in Detroit where he really wanted to be. High power offense where the Lions are opening up the season in Kansas City. What world are we living in that the Detroit Lions are in the opening night of the NFL season, but the Carolina Panthers go up to Detroit against a team that it seems like they play the Lions every single year, the team that they have dominated over the last couple of seasons week six at Miami was open for y'all that it'd be later on in the season that's an October game the weather's gonna be perfect anyways does not really matter Miami to him we'll see how his health is especially the concussions that he suffered last year but if he's healthy that offense with all the weapons that they have gonna be scary tough game two tough back-to-back games just looking at what they did last season and what they've added this past offseason at Detroit at Miami week five, week six. That's th- also, I mean, Minnesota, that's Seattle is a playoff team on the road. 
Minnesota at home is a playoff team last year. Detroit, who was very close to being a playoff team, was either going to be them or Seattle after they upset Green Bay. I, even before they lost to Green Bay, we already knew Seattle was in, or they beat Green Bay on that Sunday night football. We already knew that Seattle was in it. But that's going to be a tough game just looking at what they did last year, but things change. The league is made, so it's not for long that, hey, you go to the playoffs and half the teams are going to cycle out. We're going to bring in a new crop of teams. The Carolina Panthers, hoping, fingers crossed, will be among that new crop of teams. But Seattle, looking at what they did last season, could be a tough game on the road. Always is in Seattle. Home against Minnesota. I think the regression of the means coming at Detroit. High-powered offense could be looking at a shootout potentially in that game at Miami. Never going to be easy there. And then I think a really well-timed bye week there in week seven where you have four road games, then two home games. A lot on the road there early on in the season with a rookie quarterback. We'll see how Bryce Young handles it. He's going to have to grow up early, especially knowing that you're playing at Atlanta week one, then you got to go to Seattle week three after getting a home game and getting to really feel the hype around you being the number one pick and people being excited and the renewed hope here in Carolina, at Miami, at Detroit. That's going to be a pretty tough stretch there for the Carolina Panthers heading into that bye week, just looking at what those teams did last year. Again, things change. Just looking at it those first six weeks, it'll be interesting. Four games in a row, two at home, and in the bye week, which I think is actually coming at a good time for the Carolina Panthers. All right, that's weeks one through seven. We'll look at weeks eight through 13 when we come back here on Locked on Panthers. Have y'all been watching the NBA playoffs? What on earth was that for the Phoenix Suns on Thursday night? Make a fast break to FanDuel during the NBA playoffs because right now new customers get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's $1,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. There's no better place to bet all the playoff action than America's number one sports book. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of the NBA. All right, weeks one through seven are down. Let's look at weeks eight through 13 for the Carolina Panthers. Bye week there in week seven and coming off of the bye. Going to be back home for two straight games versus, I think, likely rookie quarterback starting off week eight versus the Houston Texans. Like I told y'all, I thought it was a no-brainer to have this be the week one game because it's Bryce Young versus C.J. Stroud, the number one, number two picks in the draft. The Panthers had debated for a month whether they're going to take Bryce Young or Stroud, but really there seemed like there was not a debate. It was Bryce Young from the beginning, and they gained clarity throughout the draft process, which led them to taking Bryce Young number one overall. Either way, there's a relationship that those guys have dating back to their time growing up in California, and they're still friends to this day. The embrace, they're in a green room on draft night. Thought that would have made a lot of sense. The Texans are not going to be a good team. Two First year head coaches. I mean, first time head coach in Miko Ryan's not a first time head coach in Frank Reich, but new head coaches in those new organizations. I, I thought that was a no brainer for the NFL, but they decided that Panthers at Atlanta, which, hey, I am also, again, I am good with that. Let's do the Falcons hate week, week one. Let's go ahead and get into it. I, I kind of just like having divisional games a little bit later on in the season and not having a game. With that much emphasis. Now, with the NFL, it's different. It's not like with college where if you play a conference game week one, like that can really affect you later on in the season if you lose it. Whereas playing a division game in the NFL, like that's, of course, that's one of six games. It's important. And there is a little bit more of importance with those games. But I don't really look, you still have what? 11 other games, so it's not that big of a deal to play a division game week one and week two, but it is great if you can get off to a 1-0, 2-0 start in a division. But Houston, week eight, I would imagine that as long as both of those guys are healthy, Bryce Young versus C.J. Stroud, week eight, Bank of America Stadium against Houston, Texas. Now, week nine, when Indianapolis comes to town, the question will be for us right now and leading up to that game, will Anthony Richardson be the starter? Will the Colts go with Gardner Minshew for the first couple of weeks of the season? And by the time we get to week nine, will be Anthony Richardson. I would love to see him play. I, I would love for back-to-back -back weeks. And, well, I don't know. Be careful what you wish for, Julian, because it could be one of those things where Bryce Young plays poorly and CJ Stroud's great. Same thing with Anthony Richardson. People are going to be like, oh, we took the wrong guy. I'm not manifesting that. I'm just thinking that there are obviously going to be those unhinged factions of the fan base who will say that maybe they won't be unhinged because maybe it will be that that way but i don't think bryce young is gonna be bad so i'm not too concerned about that scenario playing out anthony richardson though indianapolis of course frank reich his relationship with the colts having coached there 
Um, that's a game that Panther fans should be excited about. And I think, too, coming off of the bio where I was talking about, you got a couple of teams there and you got four games on the road too at home first six weeks. We got a couple of teams in Seattle were a playoff team. Minnesota's a playoff team. Detroit was right there on the cusp of being a playoff team. I think a lot of people will have them project to be a playoff team this upcoming season. Miami was a playoff team. And now you got Aaron Rodgers in the AFC East. So got Josh Allen up there in Buffalo. I mean, New England, we'll see what's going on with them. Uh, it's going to be tough for the Dolphins to be a playoff team again. So it's going to be an ultra competitive game that the Dolphins are going to need to win. It helps that it's not a conference opponent but a game that Miami is certainly going to be up for. So with two divisional opponents and four teams after that, that were in the playoffs or right there, right outside the playoffs last year, it's good after the bye to get two, let's just say doormats coming into the season in Houston and Indianapolis in week eight and week nine, week 10 short week for the Carolina Panthers as they head up to Chicago for Thursday night football. And this is a good Thursday night football game. Because of the storylines. I am not a casual Thursday night football viewer. If the Panthers play, I'm watching. If the Panthers aren't playing and it's not the first game of the season, I am not watching. It, ha it has to be a very good game for me to tune in Thursday night football. I'm just really not at that interested. And also having to go on Amazon Prime and have to close out of that app and then go to another app to go watch the rest of the TV. I'm just not going to do it. I really don't care for Thursday night football anyways. As far as storylines go, go back to 2021. The Panthers told y'all that Sam Darnold was their quarterback, but for a lot of you, for whatever reason, for five weeks, I mean, I understand Sam Darnold wasn't good, and I can understand why you would be in denial of that. They just told yourself for five weeks that they were going to draft Justin Fields. That did not happen. Uh, they were at eight. They took J.C. Horn instead. So the Panthers passed on Fields and all the quarterbacks, really, in that 2021 draft class. They didn't look at trading up to number one back on March 10th, where in that trade, they gave away D.J. Moore. So it's D.J. Moore revenge game, maybe. I wouldn't really call it a revenge game. You have that factor. Deontay Foreman, the Panthers decided not to bring him back for the cheap price of $3 million in one single season. Deontay Foreman revenge game. P.J. Walker is also up there. That's an intriguing game where this is a big year for Justin Fields to take that next step. Bryce Young, the quarterback that the Bears could have taken had they decided that let's get rid of Fields and let's get the number one pick and keep the number one pick instead. They could have done that. They did not do that. So I'm, ex I'm excited to see that Thursday night football game. I think it's a really good Thursday night game um, for the Panthers to be in. And just when you just look at the storylines, week 11, come back home. Great time to have the mini buy before facing off against the Dallas Cowboys, who should again be a tough out, not a team that's going to be a threat to win a Super Bowl or advance the NFC championship game. Cause we know the Cowboys never do that. The script writers in the NFL won't allow it, which is fine by me because no one likes Dallas and no one wants them to win. And especially no one wants their fans to be happy, but many by before the Dallas Cowboys game coming off of, which I think is two very winnable games just on paper right now. It's Houston and Indianapolis and even Chicago on the road will be a winnable game. We'll see what that bears offense looks like. Now they got DJ Moore. And in the second year of Matt Eberflus and a lot of the roster additions that they've made so far this offseason, not quite sure where the Bears will be. I do think, of course, like every NFL game for the most part, it will be a competitive game. Then going against Dallas at home where Dallas home Panthers, for whatever reason, seems like they always get that win against the Dallas Cowboys. And I don't expect week 11 this, this fall to be any differently when the Dallas Cowboys come to town. It should be an exciting environment for Panthers fans. And two, it's, uh, it's the week before – Thanksgiving. So I think a lot of people typically who are out of town, who are coming back home to Charlotte, come home early, spend that weekend watching the Cowboys game, take the next week off, spend all that time celebrating before heading to Nashville. Um, week 12 against Tennessee Titans will be Will Levis. Will Ryan Tannehill still be on the team? Will Derrick Henry still be on the team? Will Malik Willis somehow become the starting quarterback? It's unfortunate for Panthers fans, in my opinion, because it is Thanksgiving weekend, and I'm sure y'all already have your own Thanksgiving traditions where you either stay in town wherever you live or you got to go travel to in-laws or with your significant other. I, I don't know. It it's a tough break that the one week you get to go to Nashville, it's during Thanksgiving. It could also be a blessing where, okay, it's Thanksgiving weekend. I lived in Nashville for two years. I don't really recall 
what Thanksgiving weekend was really like because I don't think I was ever around. So I cannot tell you. But Nashville is a crazy city, and I'm sure the party will be on on Broadway and on Demumbrian and East Nashville and the Gulch and everywhere else in that city, no matter what time of the year it is. I just think for some people, they might be like, oh, well, we were going to go, but now I got to go to my in-laws in Ohio because I can't, which would suck for them. All right, week 13 at Tampa. Will Baker Mayfield be the quarterback? There's a lot of will he be the quarterback in a lot of these games. Uh, Anthony Richardson, week nine. Um, Will Levis, week 12. We have no idea what the deal is going to be in Tennessee. Week 13 at Tampa Bay, where the Panthers season, unfortunately, ended last year after they were unable to cover Mike Evans and Tom Brady and that whole explosive out at the Bucks hat offensively back there in December. I guess maybe it was January. Yeah, it was, still, it was January, actually. But Baker Mayfield, he's competing with Kyle Trask. I guess John Wolford's kind of in that competition. Doesn't really feel that is the case. Baker Mayfield, a revenge game. Don't really see how it could be a revenge game. The stat that brought him here is no longer here. I guess Scott Fitter is here, but Scott Fitter traded him. No, he didn't trade him. They, they, He asked for a release, and he allowed him to go walk out somewhere and go have success. So I don't think there should be any ill will, but Baker is a guy who has been fueled off of people doubting him, and maybe he'll use that fuel to – be competitive week 13 against uh, when Panthers go to Tampa Bay. But I also don't know if he's going to have the starting job by then. So we will see. So there we go. Week eight through 13 for the Carolina Panthers in 2023. Let's talk about the rest of the Carolina Panthers schedule and some of the toughest stretches and some other factoids when looking at the schedule heading into 2023 season right here in just a moment on Locked on Panthers. 13 weeks down, one, two, three, four, five weeks to go. Actually, no, because the Panthers are going to the Super Bowl. So actually, it'll be eight weeks to go because they're going to get a bye because they're going to be 17 and 0, by the way. Um, all right. Week 14 at New Orleans, the final game of a three game road stretch, which I, you look at Tennessee, you look at Tampa, you look at New Orleans, Tennessee, the Titans. Like, I just look at having lived in Nashville, having covered the Titans. Uh, I still follow a lot of people down there in Nashville and in Tennessee, and they're not high on that football team. They look at this with new general manager, Rand Carthon as like a rebuilding year where you could see guys like Kevin Byard leave. You could see guys like Derrick Henry leave. You could see guys like Ryan Tannehill still leave. And you got the post June first designation that could happen. Like they could get rid of those guys or trade them elsewhere. And they could just kind of tear this whole thing down. And Mike Vrabel, he's not going anywhere. He's still there while the former general manager, uh, what was John? I forget his name. He's, he's no longer there. They, they decided we're going to stick with Braves. So that's a game that I really feel like the Panthers are in a much better position than the Tennessee Titans. Don't have a ton of talent on that roster right now. Tennessee doesn't. I mean, my guy, Mike Herndon, I was looking at him on Twitter um, early before we were recording the show, and he was kind of looking at the situation there in Tennessee, and he's a very honest guy when it comes to covering the, the Titans. Uh, Tampa Bay, I picked them to finish last in the NFC when we did um, our state of the NFC South last week and where the Panthers stand and all that. That could change between now and once we get to the season. That's a game I think the Panthers obviously can win. And at New Orleans, never easy because it's going to be loud. I do think the, the Saints right now are the class of the NFC South. And that's not really to say very much at all about the Saints because the class of the NFC South, it's not like it's the best division in football. And there's a lot of things that are still in flux, even in New Orleans. So we'll see how that works out. But the, a three-game stretch is never easy for any team, especially a team starting a rookie quarterback. They have to go on the road four out of five weeks when early in the season, you're going to see Bryce Young probably have a little bit of hiccups with those four road games in the first six weeks. And then you get a little bit of home cooking, get some games against Houston, Indianapolis. I really feel like he should be hitting a stride. And then once you get to Chicago, you got the mini buy going, going to Dallas, like week 11, like we should be feeling good about Bryce Young and really seeing those signs of what he can do and be here in Carolina. Then after that, it's like, all right, at Tennessee, at Tampa, at New Orleans, like that's four out of five weeks where you're on the road. And that, I think, is going to be kind of a, a season-defining stretch for the Carolina Panthers. I don't know where the Bears are going to be this year. I do feel confident that Dallas will be a playoff team. I don't think Tennessee's going to be very good. Tampa can be in the mix because any team in the NFC South can be in the mix. And the same thing with New Orleans, probably the favorite right now um, to Vegas, me, and a lot of people out there to be the team that comes out of the NFC South. Not saying that's going to happen. And that's what I'm going to believe once the season actually kicks off in September. That's just the way I look at things right now. That to me right there, aside from like 
those early road games in the first six weeks, like that is really the meat and the season defining stretch of the Carolina Panthers where they need to be able to buckle down and win on the road in the NFL, something that they struggle to do the last couple of seasons. Like they've struggled to win games, period, the last couple of seasons, but to win on the road, they got to show that they can do that. And you can look at those teams, what they did last season, whether you think they're going to be any good this upcoming year, but understand it's never easy to go into another team's building and win those football games. So four to five, three in a row, big, big time stretch for the Carolina Panthers. Week 15, come home against Atlanta. That is still a uh, time to be determined, whether that'll be a Saturday game or it'll be a Sunday game. Would love it on Saturday. Give the Panthers as much kind of like prime time or freestanding a game as, as possible. So we got that game. And you're looking at the season defending, uh, defining stretch. That's three straight division games at Tampa, at New Orleans, home against Atlanta. Those are the games you got to win. Those are the ones that are important after you start off your season. Hopefully, they get off to a great start by beating Atlanta and in beating New Orleans on the road or at home. So winning at Atlanta, then coming home and beating New Orleans. So they, hopefully, they get off to a 2-0 and start or 1-1 and at the very least. Cannot be 0-2, especially when you get back in division play for three straight weeks. If you're in an 0-2 hole, you don't want to be playing back-to-back games at Tampa then at New Orleans and coming home and playing against Atlanta and trying to salvage your divisional record. Got to be 2-0, 1-1 at the very least there in the first two weeks, I think, for the Carolina Panthers, as then they get those three straight division games. Week 13 at Tampa, week 14 at New Orleans, week 15 versus Atlanta, then week 7, or week 16, rather, Christmas Eve versus the Green Bay Packers. Another team where there's there's so many teams. on. Like Let's look at the schedule. You have, okay, Atlanta, questions about their quarterback. New Orleans, not really. Seattle, not really. Minnesota, not really. Detroit, eh, yes and no. Miami, certainly just about his health. Houston, question about whether C.S. Stroud is going to be any good. Same thing with Anthony Richardson. Um, there's still question about Justin Fields. There's question about who's going to be the quarterback there in Tennessee. Tampa. There's so many games on this, this team schedule where there's question about whether that quarterback is the guy how good is he going to be will he be able to hold on to the job for the entirety of the season or by that point in the season they have an opening to beat some teams because it's not like they're playing a bunch of teams that have just defined quarterbacks and that's the luxury of being in the nfc like if they were playing in against the afc west this year where you would have to play against herbert and mahomes and who else is in the AFC West? You got the Chiefs, the Chargers, the Raiders, whatever, Garoppolo, and then the Broncos against Russell. I mean, that's what they did. That's what they did last year, right? We played did we play AFC South. No, we did not play AFC East or West last year. But it's it, different. If you're playing the AFC, you got to worry about Lamar. You got to worry about Josh Allen. You got to worry about Aaron Rodgers now. You got to worry about all these quarterbacks. That's not the case in the NFC, which allows the Panthers a team that I think has a pretty solid foundation with there's no coaching staff as, as well in, in place to be in the mix because, well, they got a good defense. And if you have a fantastic defense and if they can get to the quarterback this year, you're going to be able to create some havoc and get these guys out their, their, uh, their spot and they could struggle. So week 16 against Jordan love, I don't know what's going to look like. I would think by that point in time, he'd be feeling pretty good. It is the Packers, the Packers typically even last year when they were struggling, find a way, but they had Aaron Rodgers. So no one's quite sure. And that's a game I think we'll have a lot of eyeballs because it is the Green Bay Packers. I think the Panthers come week 16 will be right there in position to be a playoff team on Christmas Eve. That is going to be the holiday present here in the Carolinas that everyone's going to want tickets to the Packers game. Let's get no cheese heads in there, y'all. Let's just get a bunch of Panthers fans in there. Should be a fun game. Week 17 at Jacksonville. For New Year's Eve, really late to go to Jacksonville, um, but not a bad time to go to be there in, in it's North Florida. It's not South Florida, but it'd be in North Florida where it's still the South. Still could be a little bit cold, but should be a little bit warmer than what we got going on here in Charlotte by that time. Jaguars team that looking at the AFC South, don't think the Titans are any good. Don't see it with Houston. Don't see it in Indianapolis. They're probably already going to be a playoff team. They're probably going to have that division wrapped up. We'll see what their motivation is come that time. Bryce Young, Trevor Lawrence, two former number one overall picks going up again into each other. Uh, a sneaky good game late in the season. And I think, too, if the Panthers were to somehow drop that game at Jacksonville, it may not hurt them when you just look at it's not a conference opponent. So there might be a little bit of leeway. 
but obviously it depends on how things look going to that game. And then week 18 versus Tampa Bay uh, time, I think, and date still to be determined for the Carolina Panthers and never want to lose at home against a divisional opponent. That's a game that if the division's on the line, you got to win at home, got to hold serve. So that is your 2023 Carolina Panthers schedule. The first two preseason games, I believe they play the Jets and then they play, oh man, forgot to write it down. I know they play the Lions in the final week of the preseason. I, I do not recall a time of the Carolina Panthers have played a team in the preseason, and I'm sure it's happened, but they play, played a team in the preseason and gone back and played them again in the regular season. So Jets at home, week one, Bank America Stadium. Maybe we'll see Aaron Rodgers. Uh, not quite sure what the philosophy will be there for Robert Sala and the Jets as far as whether they want to play their quarterback or not. Then they're back up to uh, MetLife Stadium to play the Giants week two of the preseason. Then week three on the 25th of August on a Friday night, they'll be playing the Detroit Lions on CBS at Bank of America Stadium. Then later on, as we know, they'll be heading to Detroit in week five. So that's actually kind of quick. They, they play the Lions, and then they got a couple weeks, to, four weeks in the season, five weeks in the season, then they play the, the Lions. It'll be a little bit of, it'll, be, it'll probably be a seven-week gap, though, because there is a little gap between the end of the regular season or end of the preseason and then the beginning of the regular season. Um, quick other things I saw, like seven games versus playoff teams, two against Tampa, uh, Seattle. You got Dallas, Minnesota, Jacksonville, Miami. So seven games against playoff teams from a year ago. Could Don't see the Buccaneers being a playoff team. Uh, I can see it with Seattle. I definitely see it with Dallas. Um, tough to say with Minnesota, Jacksonville, I think there will be a playoff team and it's also tough for Miami, but I think obviously I think potential. So really it, it's, it's still open there, even with the playoff teams from a year ago. And as we know, as I said, it's supposed to recycle. You want different teams in every year. At least half the field is going to be different. Uh, toughest stretch. We got those three road games late in November and early December, uh, especially when you have the three games against Tampa, New Orleans, Atlanta, right in a row. That's an important stretch of the Carolina Panthers. We're looking at it four out of five weeks on the road. Early on in the season, we have a rookie quarterback at four of your first six games for that bye on the road. They did not do the Panthers any favors when it comes to the way that they distributed their road games, especially early on in the season. And later on, you would hope that the Panthers have really grown up and Bryce Young especially is primed and ready to be able to go on the road, compete and really go out there and win the games that matter the most and help this team get to the playoffs here in 2023. But that's going to wrap up this edition of the Locked On Panthers podcast, a part of the Locked On Podcast Network, hosted by yours truly, Julian Council. Again, subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to your podcast. And be sure to follow me, Julian Council, on Twitter, at Julian Council, where on Fridays I answer your weekly Friday mailbag questions, either at me or DM me over on Twitter to get in on the weekly Friday mailbag. Hopefully on Tuesday, going to have someone on here to break down a rookie mini camp, which is going on over the weekend here in Carolina from the 12th through the 14th. So I'm going to have that for tomorrow's show, as this, of course, is coming up on Friday afternoon, but really is going to be serving as Monday's show. But for the people who are listening it, listening to it, this will be on Monday afternoon or Friday afternoon, and then I'll be back on Tuesday, where I'm hoping to break down rookie mini camp with someone who had boots on the ground there in uptown Charlotte. Uh, but in the meantime, be safe, be happy, be whole. As always, keep pounding, and I'll talk to you all on Tuesday.